Hello viewer, my name is James Mugama from the Common School in the Twenties, Kenya Nairobi. Welcome to Sansa. Today we're going to talk about the punctuation. First and foremost, the words we are now going to start with double and it's a tenor type of change. Average and instantaneous. In average and instantaneous rate of change, we will uh, consider a, a sketch and this is a sketch of y is equal to x squared. Finding the gradient of this curve. Finding the gradient of the curve, we will pick a point, for example, this is here. After picking a point, you will draw a tangent, a tangent to that point. Passing through the point. This point now, you can find the its gradient by Placing any two points. For example, this one will be now our y axis, and this one will be our x. Ah, this will be our y axis, then this one will be our x axis. So you will find this change from here to here, and from this point to this point. If it's, it is our so y, this is one is one y, then then this one will be our y one. Same over to this one, this one will be our x, and also this one will be our x, y. Finding that gradient now will be change in y over change in x, which will be y1 minus y over x1 minus x. So the other one will give us the average and instantaneous rate of change. Okay. And let's check on the gradient of a curve at a point. Okay. Consider we have a function which is x, y equals to x squared. We may do a partition chain. So now, let us draw the top. So this is the graph of this function. We, are, we want to see to get the gradient. As my friend has just shown that to get the gradient is changing y by changing x. And here we look at the coordinates of consider this point. So let us try to get the gradient. So at this point, let's call this is page A and page B. What are, what are the coordinates of page A? We have 1, 1. And we have point B is 2, 4. Change in y, change in x. So here, this is x, this is x1, one. One. this is y, and this is x1 y1 is just exactly what we were trying to show. So we've got about 4 minus 1, we've got 2 minus 1. We're going to have 3 over 1. That's having the gradient being 3. 
and that is the gradient. Work out at a point. Maybe elaborate further what we are doing. In now finding the gradient of a curve at a point, gradient of the curve at a point is then this one is the point here. Then this is our curve. It goes like that. We can pick any place from this curve, but taking this one as our reference point. So you can take this one, you can connect it either there or you can take this one, you connect it. This bit here. This one will be taken as our reference point. Then you know it will help us to find the gradient of a curve at a point. Also, we are also going to discuss on gradient of y is equal to x raised to n, where, where n is a positive, n is equal to positive integer or a positive number. Finding the gradient at y is equal to x raised to n, we will to consider an, a curve, let's say this is a curve and this is the point, these are the points. So this is our x, this is our x axis and this is our y, our y axis. You will put a small chain, you can also let your chain be like x. You can let your chain be x. For example, if from here it can be let the chain, let use our chain, let the chain be h. So, for example, now uh, this one was the first point, so it was x. Now, the other x will be x plus h, that distance, that change, so it will be x plus h. Same to y. If it was from here to here was y, this is point of our y, then uh, the other y will be y plus h. So, finding that gradient, you will take now gradient as now the y1 minus y over x1 minus x. But our y1, we have the y, the, the x and y are here, so we can also find our y, our x1 and y1. Our x1 and y1 will be x plus h and y plus h. That's now our y1 and our, our x1 and y1. So, as my friend has just said, we're trying to get the gradient and the gradient the house is this uh need of the board. Okay. Okay. As my friend has, has just said you are looking for the gradient and the gradient you have seen is y1 minus y over x1 minus x. Let us just put some details over here and just say how a big y will be shown is y y is it's n. And for example, let, let us just take n to be 2. n to be 2. So we have x1. My friend has, has just said that x has a change, so it will be x. That's it. And y1 will be x plus h squared. I hope you understand because. Because y goes to x, 
the x1 will be the same as this x plus h. So we have the square and the main square. So what is our y1? Our y1 at this point is going to be x plus h and the square. So x plus h. It is x plus h into x plus h is the same as x plus h squared. Yes. So y one. Our y which is squared. x squared over x one to x plus h minus x. As we were taught in form two, but a plus b square equals to a square equals to a b plus b square. So it will be actually the same with this one. So we're going to have x square plus two a wait do two a h plus two h h square two x h two x h going to have that minus x squared. First let us calculate the denominator and we're going to have this and this will go leaving us with 2xh plus h squared. Look as we go to the denominator we have x plus h minus x. This and this we go leaving H. So as we combine our information, we're going to have the gradient equals to x h plus h squared over h. As you factorize the h, so you have x squared 2x sorry plus h over h. So h and h go giving us equals to x plus h. At this point h is assumed to be zero giving us as a gradient gradient function of of our equation y equals to x squared to be when reaching here, you are supposed to, for example, if it is 2xh plus h squared over h, you are supposed to limit h to 0. Limiting h to 0 simply means that if they are common here, you will factorize. You do, you will take now h into 2x plus h into h over h, then you limit h to 0. So h and h goes, it will give us our gradient function. Gradient function, it, uh, it is also written as y raised to 1, or like this. y is equals to 2x plus h, as my friend has written it here. But h is 0, giving us the gradient to be 2 x. That one simply means that if we take a point, uh, the curve of a gradient, the curve, the equation of a curve, like what my friend has drawn as y is equals to x squared. This one, y is equals to x squared. So you can see that it has already now given us the y which over dx, which is 2x. What does that simply mean? This one simply means that he took these two, he brought it the other side, and he has subtracted one. Let's let's try x squared. He has taken the two to bring at the front part. So it give us two x two minus one to give us two raised to x, which is the same. So if you are given a point or a curve y is equal to x raised to n, you will take 
this n you multiply by x, then you subtract 1 from the power. So, as to give us our gradient function, which was dy over dx, to be nx n minus 1. And let, let us have some of the examples for you to understand. So we have example. An example. So we're going to have y x equals to 3x squared. That is a. And maybe b. We do y. Y equals to negative five. That's our solution. So as our friend has just told us here, put out y equals to three x squared. So you need to multiply this the integer with our, with our coefficient, which will be three times two, having the x then. Yes, so let's, he has reminded us exactly we need to minus with 1. So we do minus 1. So our dy dx, also known as the gradient function, will be 6x above 1. So it equals to 6x. Let, let us go to b. Now y equals to minus 5. So what is our gradient function? So we're going to have y dy dx equals to. You have noticed here we don't have x, but we do the converse. We pass the boundary data. So we have the form here. That's your look at. Yeah. So let us start with b. We have y equals to minus 5. And as we are looking for the gradient function, we have noticed that we don't have x. So in this sense, x is there, but x equals to x to the power 0. We know that x to the power 0 equals to 1. That's why when we multiply with negative 5, the question just remains like this. So we got how we take the integer minus the coefficient. So zero minus negative five. Zero minus negative five from zero and now x. So zero minus one. So our gradient function is zero. Also, we can also confirm what my friend has done. Y is equal to 3x squared. You see the derivative. The derivative simply means that you will introduce a change. For example, we can let the change be h. Let the change be h. Letting the change be h. So this, this one was the y, x and y. So getting x1 and y1, it will be x plus h and y plus h. Since we know that y is equal to 3x squared, x squared, so we'll take our y1 now will be 3 into, what is our x? So it will be x1, which is x plus h, x plus h squared. Then you can open that bracket. Opening the bracket, it will give us now 3 into 2 into x squared plus 2xh plus h squared. It will give us 3x squared plus 2xh plus h and plus 6. 3 times 2. Plus 3 h squared. This one now is our y1. 
And since we have said that gradient is equals to change in y over change in x, which is y1 minus y over x1 minus x. So this is the y1, then this is y. y is 3x squared. And then x1 is x plus h, then the x was x. So you take find our gradient function to be 3x squared plus 6xh plus k3h squared minus our y which was 3x squared minus 3x squared over x plus h minus x we we will realize that 3x squared minus 3x squared is 0. So our gradient function will be 6xh plus 3h squared over h, whereby x minus x is 0. So you will remain by h. After reaching here, you will limit h to 0. Limit or since h is common, we can first of all write h into 6x plus 3h over h. Then we limit h to 0. Limiting h to 0 is, now we will divide. Since h is common, we can cancel the h. So together, our gradient function, which is dy over dx, to be 6 x plus 3h but we had already said that h is 0 so the number multiplied by 0 is 0 so our gradient function will remain as 6x take note that dy ds is the same as y is to n which both of them are the gradient function and that's why we have this this one is the same as this one, this one you see the formula so we have two two ways of getting the two ways of getting the so we have two ways of getting the gradient function through the derivative me method and this formula method which is the gradient function which is ax n plus one This one was when the coefficient of x was 1. Using the method, the method was when the x was 1, which was y is equal to x raised to n, so that we, we had already gotten that it is y is equal to n x n minus 1. But if the coefficient of x is a number, let's say a, so it let's be y is equal to n x raised to n. n x raised to n, you will also still do the same. This one is dy by dx. So, you will also do the same. Taking dy over dx is equal to, you take this n, you place the other side, so it will be n n x. Then you will still subtract 1 from the power. n minus 1. For example, if we have equation y is equal to 3x squared plus 5x and we have been told to find the gradient function of this one. Yeah? So the solution the solution will be of dy dx equals to so we have, we have the integer times the coefficient which will be 6 of x 2 minus 1 it will be just 6x plus the coefficient here which is 1 times 5 which is half 5 and we all know we all know that 1 minus 1 equals to 0 and if any number has the power raised to zero 
the answer will be 1. So you have 1 times 5, you have 5. And that will be our gradient function. So we will still go to derivative of polynomial. Derivative of polynomial. In the derivative of polynomial, you will. In the derivative of polynomial, you will also still use the same same formula that we have already given you. So derivative of polynomial. In the derivative of polynomial, polynomial, we will still use the same same formula. But in this case, you can include both the derivative method and the and the formula method. So if, for example, we can say our, our equation is y is equal to the 2x cubed plus 4x squared plus 5x minus 7. Finding the gradient of this one, you will find that dy over dx. We have already said that you will take this power, you multiply it to the first coefficient, which is 2. So you take 2, 2 times 3, 6. Then you subtract 1 from the power. So it will be 3 minus 1 to give us 2. x squared plus 2 times 4, 8. X. Then 2 minus 1 to remain with 1, which is the same as x. Then plus 5, which uh, whenever by this one is 1, we'll take here 1 multiplied by 5 to give us 5. Then x, which is 1 minus 1 is 0. The number raised to 0 is 1. Uh, we can also go to the equation of the tangents and the normal curves. Equation of a tangent and the normal curves. This one will help us to find an equation equation of a tangent of a tangent and a normal curve. In equation of a tangent, if you are being given an equation like y is equals to x squared plus 2x plus 1. And, but the points are now given where it cuts. So let's say it's 1, 1. Finding the gradient, since we, it is, will be now dy over dx. You will still do the same using the formula a x raised to n minus 1. When you by now, it will give us n a x n minus 1. So this will give us 2x plus 2. This one is our gradient. But since we know this is our x and y, so meaning that our x is 1. So you will just substitute it here to get the gradient. So gradient will be 2 into 1 plus 2 which is 2 plus 2, to give us 4. This one is our gradient. The gradient of the tangent is this 4, but the gradient of the normal, you will consider that it is perpendicular to the curve. So, for the tangent, gradient is 4, but for normal, you will consider it to be to be perpendicular to the curve. Yeah, perpendicular to the curve. So you will take the formula m1, m2 is equal to negative 1. Whereby m1 is the gradient. So we can take 4, m2 is equal to negative 1 over 4 over 4. m2 is equal to negative 1 over 4. That is now the gradient to the normal. So 
Finding the equation will be now changing y over changing x. Since we have been we have been now given the points which is 1 and 1. So you will take x gradient is changing y minus over changing x. So the gradient the equation to the tangent will be tangent will be our x we can take our y which will be y minus one this is the next one what are the points one one and the points x y under the gradient four so it will be y minus one over x minus one is equal to four over one so four over one is the same as four so you can cross multiply y minus 1 is equal to 4 x minus 4 and the gradient it and the gradient it is always in the form of y is equal to mx plus c y is equal to mx plus c so you can take the other side to give us y is equal to 4 x minus 1 when it goes to the other side will be plus 1 so it will be negative 4 plus 1 to give us negative 3 so this is our gradient to the tangent but now gradient to the normal to the normal you will use these are the points 1 1 x y and the gradient gradient to be negative 1 over 4 this one here so you take change in y will give us y minus 1 over x minus 1 to give us negative 1 over 4. You still cross multiply to get 4y minus 4 is equals to x and this one so it will be x times negative 1 to give us negative x. Then negative 1 times negative 1 to give us positive 1. Then you take this one the other side. Remain with 4y is equals to negative x plus 5 over 4 over 4 over 4 to get it in the form of y equals mx plus c so this one give us y is equals to negative 1 over 4 x plus 5 over 4 this is the gradient mx plus c y is equals to mx plus c this one is our y this m is our gradient and c is the y intercept so the gradient is negative 1 over 4 which is here and for also this one the gradient was 4 which is this one we have come to the end of our discussion club on science hub my name is kevin orodi my name is james Rodon. keep it a tv where you watch and learn thank you